Hey guys, I'm in Ceres, California. And a friend of mine, Justin uh, McMurray, invited me down to his shop and it is right here. And we're about to go inside and spend some time at McMurray Hand Forge. You should check him out on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and uh, all of that too. But check this out, it's gonna be super fun. struggling to find the right word than um, even some modern art forms. Not to discount modern art forms, but there's something to be said about a, a craft that is arguably over 3,000 years old still being a valid craft today. Um, and there has been a renaissance in the last man, 20 years probably that blacksmithing has really risen to the fore in a way that it hasn't been seen since, well, I mean, the advent of uh, uh, modern forging principles, which would be closed die forging, like, you know, they put a, like, how you make a crankshaft. Ultimately, the Industrial Revolution, Yeah, the Industrial right? Revolution. Yeah. Well, the blacksmith found a place in the Industrial Revolution, in those big industrial forging shops. The skills are transferable. That age-old, you know, ring of the anvil, the organic shapes that can be achieved with steel, that all sort of went away uh, just because of the, well, the Industrial Revolution. Again, not a bad thing, but it, it forces the blacksmith to do one of two things that I talked about earlier, which is either dive head first into those organic shapes, that artistic side of blacksmithing, or fade into obscurity. And blacksmithing fade into obscurity pretty heavily there for a long time. But I think now, with the advent of more free time, as it were, um, humans have more free time than they've ever had in the history of the planet. And as a result, we have the opportunity to learn skills that, up to this point, uh, were only to be learned because they were vital to survival. You get these guys that they like to go out into the tundra and camp with very little for two weeks for fun. Whereas say 200 years ago, people were doing that to survive. The same principle, although less life threatening, is here in blacksmithing. We have all this free time, which means we can go out into the wilderness and survive by creating artistic pieces that cannot really be replicated via machines. Machines can do a lot, but there are certain things that the human hand, the human eye, just excels at. Not to say that this may someday be replaced by machines, but there is a there is a, a certain romance to a, a piece of forged iron, especially an old piece of forged iron, that is not not to be found in something that was, say, CNC milled or uh, in just in the same way as uh, recently I saw um, an ad on Instagram of all things for artificially intelligence created paintings where it's a, a program that creates a painting and while they're they're neat looking it's difficult for me to call them art because there is no human element in them and it's 
quite obvious that there's no human element in it uh, because it, there's an uncanny valley sort of thing going on there where it, say this artificial program decided to paint the form of a human. It doesn't look like a human. It's, it's very strange. But I think that that is, that, although to a lesser extent, is true with metalwork in that humans have an eye for things that I don't know that a machine could ever have. Now, of course, you know, CNC is programmed by a man, so there's definitely art in that, but um, it's a different kind of art, you know. I, I may be biased, though, because I love this craft. So you're noticing that if you strike the anvil, it wants to feed you that hammer. That's the rebound. So that, what that is, is that's the, that's the hammer, but the anvil doing just as much work as the hammer. 